Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at what is possibly one of the best value for money IPS 144Hz 1080p screens you can buy right now. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at AOC's 24G2U. This is possibly one of the, uh, the most hyped 1080p monitors you can get at the moment and it has had a little bit of controversy. There has been some uh, little bit of uh, raised eyebrows. AOC brought this monitor out and in certain regions there was a difference in panels between the 2019 model and the 2020 model and the 2020 model is pretty much the same as the 2020 version. Now this has been sent to us kindly for review purposes from AOC themselves. So I thought we'd take a look at it, see what we thought. As you guys know, we're into uh, budget peripherals, budget parts, and making the most of your dollar or pound, whichever the case may be. So when they offered to send it across and I looked at the price and I was thinking, this is around about 150 pounds here in the UK at the moment from certain websites. We'll put some links in the video description below. But for 144 Hertz, IPS and 1080p with free sync support, this does tick an awful lot of boxes. So let's go through the unboxing process, see what we actually get, take a look at the connectivity on the monitor itself, look at the screen, look at things like the speakers, and work out whether it is the right monitor for you. So obviously most of the unboxing, you can tell we've pretty much done already. Obviously this is the screen, it has been unboxed and assembled, and it's a very straightforward thing to do. The stand itself is very, very capable, works extremely well, and it's a completely toolless design. The base of the monitor, very, very nice, nice angular section on there, very well supported, very, very minimal wobble or roll to the actual screen itself when it's connected up. There is also support for VESA mounting if you want to forego the actual mount itself, but the mount actually is pretty darn good. You've also got a terrific amount of motion available, so you've got height adjustment, which is available from the stand itself, so that is on the highest section, and it can go right down, so again, it's gonna fit on pretty much most desks if you've got some sort of recess to fit in. Also as well, you have got the option to tilt and also rotate the monitor. So if you wanted to, if you're using this as a separate monitor, you can, if you want to, set it up in portrait or landscape mode. This would be amazing for things like Discord or for programming, that kind of thing, as a secondary monitor. But for a primary monitor, it is absolutely great. You've got some swivel availability as well, actually on the, the stand itself. So a nice bit of swivel there. And also you've got, obviously, some tilt as well, both up and down. Although not a great deal of downward tilt, which is something which may bother some if you've got the monitor slightly higher and you want to aim it down towards your eyesight, then you may find that a little bit challenging. But being that it's an IPS display, the color accuracy and also the viewing angles are exceptionally good. This has got a really good sideways angle of anything up to around about 170 degrees. They do say about 180, 178, that kind of thing. But realistically, when you get completely off axis, it isn't particularly good. But for most people, you're gonna be looking at this either straight on or maybe a slight degree offset, in which case it's gonna look and respond absolutely brilliantly. So when we take it out of the box, obviously the panel itself, you've got very easy to put together. You obviously get a power cable, you get an HDMI lead, and also you get a display port cable, which is excellent. And there's other things included like a software driver disc and some uh, energy efficiency stickers, should you wish to use them. Also, there is a lot of uh, installation guides and instructions and warnings, etc., on this pamphlet and also on the box itself. So very, very easy to put together. Even if you're a complete novice, you shouldn't have any problems with this whatsoever. One of the problems you may find yourself is actually what you actually connect it to. There's a whole choice of connections on here. So we've got two HDMI ports. We've also got a display port, which supports up to display port 1.4. If you're slightly older, then you've got a VGA port as well. So if you're rocking one of those older graphics cards because you can't buy one currently, then you can still plug in a VGA source, which is uh, not particularly necessary, but a nice inclusion. When it comes to sound, you've got pretty much everything covered. So you have actually got built-in speakers in here, and I'll let you listen to some of the demonstrations of what they sound like right now. Certainly the speakers aren't gonna shake the room, but definitely usable, and for general things like watching YouTube videos, 
windows dings and bings then they're going to be absolutely fine obviously if you do want a much better sound experience a separate pair of speakers or a headset would be advisable talking of speakers there are actually inputs and outputs on the back of the monitor so you've got the traditional green and black input so if you want to run a fly lead from your pc 3.5 mil jack straight into here for sound you can do and also there's an output for headphones another really nice feature is the built-in usb hub which we'll take a look at now in order to get a better look at the usb hub i've taken the panel off the stand and also now you can see the stand how it all works etc really easy to put on a couple of clips at the top there and this bottom section is spring loaded so it just clips into place very very nice i really do like that when it comes to the usbs as you can see on here we've got four usb ports so you've got a input as well so that goes from the pc into the monitor then you've got three usb 3.0 ports and also you've got a charging port as well so if you're one of those people that maybe got your peripherals all connected to your monitor because your pc is quite far away this is going to be absolutely great and also obviously charging telephones mobiles that kind of stuff or airpods whatever absolutely brilliant that you've got the pass through on there taking a slightly closer look at the input so you've got your hdmi port 2 hdmi port 1 display port you've got that d sub that we talked about and then you've got your speaker connectivity options there and also there is a kensington lock slot so if you want to lock this down to a desk you can do and obviously you've got your power input as well which is your traditional kind of kettle lead style device on the back of the panel you can see we've got the afc logo you've got some ventilation areas there as well to let the heat out you've got these strips on the side a uh, little bit gamery whether or not you like that sort of thing that is down to the individual obviously because it's on the back you're not going to see it a great deal that is one of the things of this panel which I'm not overly keen on the red accents on monitors and keyboards and peripherals in general. I guess it does set it aside from what target market it is for. Obviously, if it's just plain black, generally it's designed for offices or professionals. If it's got a splash of color or some RGB, then it's designed for gamers. I think realistically now in 2021, we kind of, we've grown past that. So I think it's probably about time now that monitor manufacturers and peripheral manufacturers kind of ditch the gamery stuff. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. So attaching the monitor back onto the stand, extremely simple to do, even from a slightly obscure angle. So there's just some hooks there, which go into the top of the panel and it just clips into place. So again, very, very easy to do. And from this angle here, you can see the adjustment of the height there and also the rotation. So again, fully usable in this section. There is cable management on the back as well, we can see here. Cable management on monitors, I'm kind of not really bothered either way. For most people, I think it's probably gonna be one of these things that they're gonna be completely overlooked. And again, if you're wall mounting it, then it's completely irrelevant anyway. But I guess it is kind of handy to have there, although if you've got the monitor in the highest extension, the cable management, the cables are gonna go straight through there, so you're gonna see them pretty clearly. Okay, one of those things that, uh, yeah, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. What does make a difference, is the quality of the display, which we'll take a look at now. So demonstrating a display on a YouTube video is probably not the best way of showing you how good a display is. Obviously, this is being filmed with my Lumix camera, which doesn't always do things the greatest of justice anyway. And obviously you're watching on your own panel. So if you've got a particularly poor panel, then this is gonna look trash anyway. But if you're watching this with a decent setup, then you get a good idea of what it's like. Now, actually in person, the colors, the actual smoothness, the smearing, etc. This is a really good panel, it really is. And actually going back to my previous panel, which is up behind me there, which is a slightly older one, only 60 Hertz panel. It is a night and day experience. That thing is a smeary mess when gaming, whereas this is extremely smooth. And even just in Windows, the Windows environment, moving Windows around, it's just very, very smooth. It is a very, very big difference. So if you've not experienced 144 Hertz or even 120 Hertz gaming or Windows use before, it's something that once you've experienced is very, very difficult to go back to. Even if you're looking at another panel, which is possibly similar to this in specifications, but is maybe only free sync up to 75 Hertz, you really aren't doing yourself any justice. It really is worth taking that little jump into the slightly next price bracket, which, ain't. Yeah, 150 pounds isn't a huge jump. Most of the free sync monitors, IPS, they up to about 75 Hertz, aren't a lot cheaper than this and they're often to be around about the same price. So if you can, definitely go for a 144 Hertz display. It does make a massive difference. 
When gaming, when you put this into overdrive mode, I would suggest if you're gonna be using this yourself, put the overdrive mode if you're using a higher refresh, like 120, 144, set it to either strong or medium, much better. The gray to gray response times are much better. There's virtually no smearing at all. It's extremely smooth. If you're using this, maybe you've got a slightly older system or you're hanging on to one of those older graphics cards because you can't get one at the moment and you're somewhere between kind of 60, 75 hertz, then I would probably turn the overdrive either down to off or maybe just the lower settings. You will find the gray to gray response to be pretty decent even at those rates. The fact that you can switch it between the different modes for different refresh rates is extremely handy, although the menu itself isn't the greatest. I would say if this monitor has one big disappointment for me, it is the menu system. AOC are not, not doing the best as far as menus go. Now obviously things like Samsung panels, etc. you've got the nice joystick wheel on the back, which is really easy to navigate and makes a lot of sense. Whereas with this one for the menus, you've got the buttons which are hidden away underneath. Once you get used to them, they're okay. So you press the button, if I can find it, which goes to show what it's like. So the menu pops up on the bottom and you can scroll through. I would have loved for these to be illuminated or to actually have some sort of display there so you know which button you're pressing. It will make life a lot easier. There's tons of settings you can go through in here to change. You can turn on free sync. There's an HDR mode, which you can turn on or off or adjust for different settings. It's not true HDR, but it gives you the HDR effect. You can change things like obviously volume, brightness levels, etc., etc. Now currently at the moment, this has got the brightness level set to virtually zero, which actually makes it look much better on camera. In real life, it is a little bit on the dull side, but if I turn the brightness up much further than this, you basically can't see it on the camera. So it has got a particularly good brightness to it. They say it's around about 200 nits, which is, uh, again, for the IPS panel, is pretty decent. The color reproduction is excellent. Being this IPS, it does look much better than a VA panel. In my experience, using it for various different things, so gaming, video editing, web content, all those kinds of things, IPS really does stand out to me personally as being the way to go. Now, obviously, VA panels or TM panels are going to be much faster in general, but they just don't have that color accuracy. They do have increased contrast, but I think even with this panel, even though it is IPS, which are known to have slightly lower contrast ratios, it still does a fantastic job. And I've been watching movies, watching some YouTube content, etc., on here. It really is a fantastic panel. So if you're in the market at the moment for a new monitor and it's, you want high refresh rate, 1080p, 144 hertz, and you do want to get that IPS technology on your desk, this is definitely worth looking at. It has been very well received across the industry. Uh, Hardware Unboxed had a fantastic review on both the 2019 version and the 2020 version of this panel, where there were some kind of swap overs between the manufacturers, etc. I guess that's down to the ongoing human malware thing and availability, etc. But even so, even though they have swapped out the panel, there's some plus sides and some downsides. You've got a slightly lower contrast ratio on the newer panel, but pretty much everything else has been improved. So if you're looking for a great gaming experience, you want to spend around about £150 on a monitor, this is definitely well worth a look. So this has been the AOC 24G2U. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.